So I didn't realize how long I was talking uh, when I made this video. So, so before I start the video, I just want to say that I'm really sorry how long these videos turn out. But I think there's a lot of important stuff to be said in them. So I think I'll add a timeline below the video and in the comments. And you can skip between the sections if you want to do that. Hey guys, this is Fiverr. So last episode about path of building, I went through the basics and you should have a grasp of how path of building works by now. In this episode, I want to talk about how to import someone else's build and understanding it in path of building. It is not quite obvious when you open up someone else's build, like why he uses certain items or certain skills or well, there might be some question marks about stuff that you feel shouldn't be there or whatever. I'm going to do this in three parts. The first part, I'm going to open my own Frostblades Raider and just go through that one and explain the uh, path of building blueprint behind that one. After that, I'm going to pick a random build from the forums and just open up that one and we'll go through it together. And I'll show you how I... Well, how I determine, like how I how I understand someone else's build. And last, I'm gonna open up a build that I've already saved here in, in my path of building that is exaggerated. And it is a good idea to know how to look through someone else's build to be able to avoid playing some of these builds because they might not be as good as they they are shown to be uh, always. So, but let's start by opening up my Frostblade Trader. So, the first thing you do when you open up someone else's build is to check the notes because there might be explanations for stuff in the notes. And you might not want to read through all of this right away, but if you have question marks when you're going through the, the paste bin, it's a good idea to, uh, to go back through the notes because there might be an explanation there. Then, let's have a look at the tree. So I suggest looking for the bigger keystones to begin with. This is a good idea to open up the tree, the tree to uh, get an understanding of what type of character you're playing. Look at the keystones to begin with, because there might be import, important keystones that are very relevant to the, to the build. In my case, there isn't really. I have base acrobatics and acrobatics, but that's just a defensive measure. In other cases, you'll have like, well, Resolute Technique, or we have, well, Blood Magic, for instance. We have Chaos Inoculation and stuff like that, that play a much bigger part in how the build actually works. So it's a good idea to check this to, uh, to get a first grasp of the build. And then, like I mentioned, we went through it in the first video. Uh, check the bottom left here if there are multiple versions of the skill tree. After you've had a look at the skill tree, I suggest checking the skills and just trying to figure out how the synergy works within the skills. You see in my skill setup here, I have a lot of stuff. And you'll see that I have a leveling setup below here. This is just to give an, uh, an, a basic uh, outline for what skills to use when you're leveling to make that easier. But the first thing, like check the main setup. What skill is the main setup? Well, I'm using frost blades in mine, obviously. You'll notice that not all of them are clicked and there are reasons for that. And the reason why I don't have ancestral call clicked, this is common and this is not something that I have speci uh, specified in this uh, um, paste bin. I feel like this is uh, so so common that it shouldn't need to be specified but I maybe I should have done it anyway but so I have ancestral call unchecked here and that is because I'm measuring the DPS that I do versus shaper or a bigger boss in general and typically you don't use ancestral call then I'm using ruthless instead of ancestral call in this case when I'm mapping it looks like this instead I also have multi-strike unchecked and 
there is a reason for that and I'll get to that pretty soon. But multi-strike doesn't work in, in path of building and there is a way to uh, account for it anyway. Multi-strike multi hasn't worked since patch 3.7 and I'm not sure when he will fix it, but I'll show you why, why this one is unchecked then. You can see what buffs, check the buffs and like a good idea is to check the skill levels here as well. <clears throat> you don't want to, uh, in, in some cases you'll have a build where the person has set their skills to like 21, 23, all of them, which isn't really realistic for, for anyone to, uh, well, if you're super rich, then that is realistic to reach. But for a new player, I don't think that's very realistic. So have a look for the skill levels and and all that. Really just go, go through these. Understand like if he has several auras that he's using, how can he afford to use all of them? Oh, he's using Enlighten. Okay, so he has three auras or two auras linked in his shield uh, and Enlighten with them. And why does he have it in his shield? Oh, well, he's using a shield with... Uh, reduced mana reservation, etc. There are a lot of uh, small synergies that you need to have a look at. We'll get through this when we go through the items as well. And actually, let's head on to that. Try it or not. I, we can check like the, the movement setup and all that that I have as well. I have different setups here. I, you see, I have option one and option two, depending on if I have an assassin's mark ring or not. So if I don't have an assassin's mark ring, then I use these setups. If I don't, If I have an assassin's mark ring, I use these setups instead and I have this clarified in the notes so if you open up this section and something is really confusing then check the notes because there might be something about it there uh, you'll see I have it here very like a very thorough section about the skill gems that you can go through next head on to the items a good idea to uh, to uh, a good thing to do when you're opening up the items page is to check the items and check the values on the items. Because if someone has a build where all the values on all the items are put to their maximum, then that is a bad sign. If you have someone like, well, say, well, I could have had a, a Assassin's Mark Ring here that had, instead of these this multi-modded version, because this is just a crafted Assassin's Mark Ring. This one costs two exalts to make. Uh, aside from the alterations and all that, but I could have done it like this instead and gone with maximum life and I could have gone with increased elemental damage like this and then it would have been a much better ring than it is um, currently. And this, you, you see that makes quite a big difference on the DPS output. So have a have a look at that. If someone has over-exaggerated their items, is this, re is this realistic to have etc. This is the expensive version we're looking at right now. I have a very expensive expensive version as well and not of the I all of the items are over exaggerated on that one either. I have tried to avoid putting them at their maximum values because I don't think that's realistic. I also have a budget version where, where things are very limited. Uh, there's only three uh, affixes on these rings for example the uh, body armor is is very basic and so on so have a look for that but then you'll also notice when you go through the items on builds and sometimes you might see that there are like different like on this one you'll see a bunch of red text here so this is something that the uh, creator of the build has put in there to explain something that might look weird or explain the uh, reasoning behind the item or so on so if you see red text like this then read through it red text also uh, is how the text shows up if you have a modifier on an item that doesn't work you'll see the quality there for example or the can have multiple crafted modifiers the multiple crafted modifiers doesn't doesn't matter if it works or not it just really doesn't matter in, in path of building the quality however is something you'll have to add manually to the uh, to the quality of the item. You can do that. This isn't really something that I plan on going through, but let's go through it anyway. Um, you can do that by opening edit and then just change it here. So if I wanted to make this 30 quality instead, I can do that and save and it will turn to 30 instead. In other cases, like on my dark gray vectors, 
you'll see that I have at the bottom a bunch of extra modifiers and above it, it says multi-strike workaround. So this is the way that I fix my multi-strike. And I always, like I have it stated here in the, uh, I have it somewhere, <laughs> somewhere here in the, in the notes section. Uh, I think I have it at the top actually. Yeah, I have a, a section about workarounds here. And where I explain this, why why this, the dark ray vectors have uh, extra modifiers on them and why multi-strike isn't clicked in the skills section. So you'll see that when you go through. I actually have on my flasks, I think I have the max values here. I don't have, have it on Taste of Hate. A Serious Promise is not that expensive. It's not also like, it's not a big deal if you have the maximum values on this one. And the same goes for Lion's Roar. Well, Lion's Roar only has a 5% difference, but I, maybe I shouldn't have these at max values, but I feel that is reasonable. So I've decided to have them at this. You can also check in my, in my path of building, for instance, even in the budget version, I have a lethal pride and a watcher's eye, which neither of those is a very budget item to have. So uh, check the notes section because there's probably something about it. Uh, let's see. I know I've put it in here. Yeah. The Watcher's Eye and the Lethal Pride is in the budget version and the cheap version. And you should remove them from their sockets. The reason why they are here is because when you make different uh, item setups and you have jewels in it, they don't get added to the different setups. So if I change this back and forth, you'll notice that these will stay empty now when I remove them. So I've added them there because they're supposed to be there in the expensive and super expensive version of the build. Then we have configurations. I'm gonna return these where they should be. There we go. Then we go into the uh, configuration page and there are a lot of stuff clicked here. And well, let's just start by figuring out why all the all of these things are checked. So I have frenzy charges. Where do I get my frenzy charges from? The first thing I usually do is check the skill tree. Do I have anything here that gives frenzy charges? And then you can search at the bottom here. You can just search frenzy. And you'll see that there are a bunch of stuff highlighted here. So this one gives me an extra frenzy charge, an extra minimum frenzy charge, extra frenzy charge. So these these don't generate any frenzy charges, but then in our ascendancy here in the in the raider ascendancy, you'll see this one: uh, twenty percent chance to gain a frenzy charge on kill, which makes sure that I get frenzy charges when I'm mapping, and twenty percent chance to gain a frenzy charge when you hit a rare or unique enemy. So this is the way that I generate frenzy charges in my build. Um, so let's continue with it. I also have onslaught. So where do I get Onslaught from? Well, let's do the same thing. Open the skill tree, search Onslaught, and you'll see that I have Onslaught in the in the uh, Raid Ascendancy as well. And I gen when generate Onslaught, I have 10% chance to generate Onslaught uh, for 10 seconds when I hit a rare or unique enemy. So that's how I have Onslaught. And I also gain Onslaught for 10 seconds whenever I kill an enemy. So with the same there with the Frenzy Charges. I just get them by hitting stuff. Next thing we have, we have Rage 30. So where am I getting Rage from? Well, the, I don't get it from anywhere in the skill tree. You can do like this and see that no, there's no Rage here. The only Ascendancy that gets Rage automatically is the Berserker Ascendancy. I'm not sure if you actually get it from, yeah, you get it from Scion as well. Yeah, you get it from Scion as well. But so I don't get rage from here, but I get it from skills instead. I'm using the support gem for rage. So this is how I generate rage. So that is why I have it here. You could have this set to 50 and that would increase the damage, but I don't feel that it's reasonable. You are rarely at, at 50 rage stacks especially not if you have berserk activated and i have berserk activated in mine uh, if i can find it here i have berserk activated and you see it's it's on a low level as well this is to account for the strength requirements and so on you, i could have this one at maximum level in the lethal pride version but since not all versions are lethal pride versions then i have these lower so that's where i get the rage from where do i get chill from well chill 
when you critical strike any target when you have a cold attack uh, you will shield the target and depending on how much damage you do the uh, the shield effect gets stronger um, and you need to do i'm not sure the exact value now i think you need to do 60,000 damage in one hit if you want to shield shaper some it's something like that so i do shield shaper that is like as long as they get the uh, the uh, debuff shield it doesn't matter how much it affects them but as long as they get the debuff then they are counted as shield uh, and i you see i do a lot more than than 60,000 in one hit even sh I should actually count the damage before I activate show so I do a lot, about 470,000 in one hit that's the average hit which means that I, I'm, I'm shilling shaper on a pretty good margin I have also set it to shaper guardian here it's the enemy a boss and I could have had it at no which would give me a lot of dps but since we're measuring the dps versus shaper that's what we care about the damage we have when we're clearing maps doesn't even matter if we, if we have 1 million or 10 million we're still going to be one shotting stuff so it doesn't matter the interesting one is the damage we do versus shaper or guardians or uber elder and so on i also have cat stealth active so that's because I have Aspect of the Cat, and Aspect of the Cat is something that you get from items. So I have it crafted somewhere on one of my items, and in my case you'll see it on my belt. So if if you have Aspect of the Cat available here, that there means that there is a source from it somewhere. It doesn't appear here unless you actually have it. So, And you shouldn't have both of these checked because you can only have one of them active at the same time. So I've chosen to have Cat Stealth active. I have nothing else checked here, so these are all the parameters that I've been using, that I'm using on my Frostblade character. I think this gives you the basic understanding of it. And let's move on to open up someone else's build. If you have questions about my build, then you can just ask me on my stream, or, or check the forums, or my Discord channel, or whatever. Um, but hopefully you'll be able to uh, understand it yourself when we go through this one. So let's go back and let's open someone else's build. Let's pick, let's go to the, let's go, let's not pick a ranger, let's pick something else. Let's pick a marauder or something. Um, let's pick this one. This is a classic. This build has been around for ages. Yeah, since two, 2016. This is a very, very old build, but still works. So let's find the paste bin. And we have the path of building link here. I'm going to go with this one. Copy. Like, obviously, obviously you uh, should read the guide because most of the things that you're going to find in the path of building is probably listed here so obviously you should read that but for the sake of this video we're going to skip that and just open it and see if we can understand the the path of building blueprint anyway so we import that build and then you'll see he's using ancestral worship and ball ancestral worship but ancestral worship is the main skill it seems so when we're looking at the skill tree here what keystones is he using well he's using blood magic so we know that he's probably not going to have any auras and well he doesn't need any mana that's well that's basically what it tells you he's using resolute technique so he can't deal critical strikes but he has 100 percent hit chance he's using ancestral bond which means that he can't do any damage by himself so this is a pretty big giveaway we already knew this that it was a totem build but this is a pretty big giveaway that you're playing a totem build because this way you can't deal any damage by yourself only your totems deal damage he's also using avatar fire which converts 50 percent of his physical cold and lightning damage to fire damage and he can only deal fire damage since he's playing a chieftain he also has an gamma who flames advice which converts 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 another 50 percent to fire damage so he's doing a hundred percent of his physical as fire
I think this is what we can take away from this passage. Like, obviously, we can check the routes and see what he has gone for, like what type of modifiers he has gone through uh, for, and that should be something that we do as well. This is a 3.7 passive skill tree. I don't think it matters that much if we change it. No, it doesn't matter that much. I'm gonna see. He does have. Let's see. He does have several different skill trees. I'm not going to bother going through all of these skill trees because there's no point in doing that right now. But he has th several different skill trees. So if something doesn't appear uh, logical in the build otherwise, it might be a good idea to check the different skill trees because in one of them they might be logical. So let's check the skills. Well, we know he's using Ancestral Warship. And we can see what uh, skill... Uh, support skills so he's using elemental focus uh, that means that he's not going to be igniting anything or well shilling or shocking he wouldn't be shilling or shocking anything anyway since he's using fire damage but this means he can't ignite stuff so he doesn't care about uh, the ignite damage or or having them ignited the enemies uh, this is an important one don't use this one when you're making your own build and you want to shock or shill or ignite don't use this skill because this one will prevent you from doing that. He's using shield charge as his movement skill and he has fortify on it. Uh, it's a good idea. I always have fortify on my movement skill as well. Uh, it's a very easy way to give yourself some extra defense. Immortal call, stone golem. He has enfeeble on, an, on a cast from damage taken as well. The auras he's using, well he's using vol haste and vol grace. He's also using vol cold snap. Um, well, I guess this is... He's probably using this to generate frenzy charges, I would assume. Because he's not really gaining anything from the other effects from it. I don't think he does. Yeah, he's probably using this to generate frenzy charges. He has Enduring Cry and Flame Dash. Um, this is also something that I like doing. He already has shield charge, but flame dash is a good idea to have when you have a movement skill like like shield charge or whirling blades that can't cross gaps or get over obstacles. Then flame dash is really nice to have as well. He's using enduring cry uh, to generate endurance charges, so we know where he gets those from because that's probably going to be in the configuration when we look at that one. And he's using elemental weakness. He has that on his gloves, so he he he. Uh, curses elemental weakness by hitting them and he won't do this this won't work with his ancestral warship so he's probably applying this by shield charging into his enemies that's i would have assumed that's what he does and so let, let's check the items next so he's using tukahama's fortress this is to give him an extra totem so he can have three totems up i think yeah, he can have three totems up because he has this one. He has Ancestral Bond, which gives him an extra totem. And then he can have one totem by default. So he can have three totems up at the same time. So his DPS is basically this times three. So each one of them deals 785,000 DPS. And since he can have three of them, then he deals, well, 2,400, 2.4 million or something like that. Quick maths. He's using abysses to give himself a lot of extra damage. <clears throat> abysses is a two-edged, a double-edged sword. Um, it also increases the physical damage you take by a lot. So if you're using abysses, you need to make sure that you have a lot of life or a lot of uh, physical damage reduction. And he has 85% physical damage reduction, which is really good. So this abysses works in his case, and he still has 6k life. It is, it is. It is a decent amount of life. He's using face breakers, which is why he's not using any weapon. And face breakers work pretty fine with totems. So that is a logical one. Lore weave for extra damage, death store. These can be expensive, um, but it doesn't really matter. He's never stated anywhere. As far as I know, this isn't the budget version. He had a budget version as well. This isn't one. So he's using a death store, it prevents him from getting a bleed. It gives him an extra endurance charge, movement speed, and a bunch of other stuff. 
let's check his rare items because this is where I think it's get it get it gets interesting. There's one thing that I noticed here now about the lore weave. Let's check that one out. He has the modifiers. Well, not all of them, but the imported modifiers are maxed, the ones that he care about. And I don't agree with doing this. He doesn't have everything maxed, but I don't agree with doing this because most likely no one is going to get a lore weave like this. But whatever. Let's check his, his rare items. And you'll see that the rare items are very, very reasonable. He doesn't have like a shitload of life and his resists aren't maxed. He has three resists and like it's a good amulet. But this is totally reasonable. Same with the rings. Like 44 life on them. Totally reasonable rings as well. Uh, Darkness and Throne is very very cheap. No one no one uses this except him. The jewels are well, they are reasonable. There's nothing wrong with these as well. He's not using any expensive flasks. He does have the Lion's Roar maxed, but so do I. So I shouldn't be like, yeah, I shouldn't say anything about that. And all these jewels are reasonable. They are good jewels, but they are reasonable. There's nothing like fishy going on here. So let's check the configuration next. So he's using Frenzy Charges. Well, we already know where he got the Frenzy Charges from. Uh, we, he gets them from his Cold Snap. Since that one generates, you'll see it says, Gain a Frenzy Charge when an enemy dies within this skill's area. I don't necessarily agree with him uh, having this one checked. Since he has, he has, he's measuring Shaper Guardian DPS. This is good. This is something that you should have checked if you care about killing Shaper or Elder or whatever. Uh, but since he's fighting Shaper, he's probably not going to have killed any enemies recently except after the portal phase. So I don't agree with having this checked. But he has a source from it. He, he does generate Frenzy Charges sometimes. Endurance charges, well, we know that as well. He's using Endurance Cry. <clears throat> Endurance Cry. So that's where he gets those from. Have you been hit recently? Well, that one is, is totally reasonable to have. So he's been hit recently. Okay. Does it give him anything? Yeah, he gets some life regen from having been hit recently. Is the enemy blinded? Well, so let's check the skill tree to begin with. Blind. He doesn't have anything in the skill tree that blinds enemies. He doesn't have any skills that blinds enemies. We've already gone through them. But he did have on his jewels. 6% chance to blind enemies on hit with attacks. And I am not sure if I do agree with this. Because I don't think... Uh, I'm actually not sure if Ancestral Call or Ancestral Warsheaf can blind. Does it count as an attack? I don't think it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, maybe he blinds them with Ancestral Worship. And if he has three of them up at the same time and all of them hit 2.4 attacks per second, then yeah, maybe maybe he blinds. Maybe that's reasonable. He also has is the enemy covered in ash. And let's check this one. Let's go here and ash. Well, we see... In his ascendancy, he has in the chorus death's fury, which gives which gives twenty percent chance to cover rare or unique enemies in ash for ten seconds on hit. So there's nothing fishy. Like I knew this one. This one works. This one has been around for a long time. This build and it has always been a strong build. It is a fairly, it's a fairly cheap build actually. And if you're a new player, then this is uh, this is very beginner friendly. So this is actually a build that I recommend. I've never played it myself, but I know that it works. I don't think there's much else to go through here. He doesn't have anything in his notes. We should have checked that first, but he doesn't have anything in his notes. Um, and you can check the calculations and all that. As, and you'll see, he only does fire damage because he has Avatar of the Ash or Avatar of, Avatar of Fire. But I don't think this is super important to go through right now either. So we've gone through this one, and I think we understand where his stuff is coming from and the premises of the build. So he's building physical damage, 
uh, and he's scaling the damage, his fire damage, based on that physical damage, since he converts 100% of his physical damage into fire damage. Let's look at another one. Okay, so this is a an example of a build that you should be wary of when you're looking at a... Well, if you're a new player and, you, and you're looking for uh, a build to play, uh, this is something to look out for. So this is an actual build. I'm not going to open it from the forums and because I don't want to name and shame. But this is an actual build. I haven't done anything to this and I've just imported it. And there are a lot of things that are weird with this one. So the skill tree it itself isn't, there's nothing strange about the skill tree. Actually, I should leave it the way it was. Hang on because this is the 3.7 version. So let's look at the 3.7 version. So there's nothing fishy about the skill tree. Um, he has even done something. He has only set it to 96, which is uh, better than I do. Uh, I usually set mine to 100. Uh, that's because I always try to have a skill tree prepared for anyone who wants to play level 100. I usually have a alternative i have alternative I, I, i'm mousing over the extra skill trees down here but it doesn't have an extra there but i have a level 90 skill tree as well and etc uh, but this is actually a good thing that he's done more or less but there's nothing weird going on in the in the uh, passive skill tree i would i would argue that if you're getting acrobatics you might as well get face acrobatics as well because it's a bunch of like it's four skill points and you get like well 10 extra dodged attacks and 30 percent chance to dodge spells so if you're getting acrobatics i think you should be getting face acrobatics but that's not a big deal let's check his skills and you'll notice that his blood rage is level 21 like the the He's having all of these on manual cast, which isn't a big deal. Uh, Blood Rage doesn't need to be activated often. Uh, Ice Golem doesn't need to be activated often if you have a level 21, since it's not going to die that much. Frost Bomb is, well, he's going to have to cast this manually, but that's not a big deal. He has Vol Haste, Assassin's Mark, Curse on Hit, and Herl of Ice. His Herl of Ice is level 21 with 23 quality. This is a big deal. This is expensive to get this one. If we were to, to lower the value, so let's say he has 8 million damage right now. So let's lower the value on this one. From this jewel alone, will he... Actually, let's see how much he loses. So 8.28. Well, he lost a bunch of DPS from lowering that one. So let's go to his frost blades, And you'll see that all of his skills in this setup is set to 21. And one of them is 23 as well. The Ancestral Call is unchecked, just like I do, because he's not using this one when he's uh, uh, fighting bosses. But let's set these to, like, level 21, 20 gems, they are expensive. So unless you have a really, really big budget, then you're not going to be able to, uh, like, this isn't something that you aim to get to begin with. And you see, we've we've taken him down, well, half a million in, in DPS by just changing these one level let's continue he has level 21 herald of purity the other stuff there's nothing weird going on with the other stuff here let's check his items but like if you if you see something like this then it's generally a bad sign so let's check the items so his claw is fairly reasonable or this is not a super good claw uh, I suspect he made this one a while back actually I don't know but this isn't a very good claw so this is totally fair that not, nothing wrong with the claw he's using blood seeker in offhand which is a very cheap claw he's using abysses and when you have 5,000 life like he does and he has low evade chance he has no well he has 38 percent physical damage reduction using something like abysses is a bad idea uh, but he's using abysses and yeah 
it's not the uh, the uh, end of the world but this is often something um, people do to inflate the dps in path of building i would assume that he's not actually using abysses that often but let's leave it like that he's using lore weave i don't think his lore weave is super maxed or anything um he has good rolls on it but it's not super like nothing exaggerated this one is fair this is a leg legacy version of lore weave i don't think you can reach 80 anymore um offering of the serpent nothing wrong Let's look at these items though. His boots have 108 maximum life. They have triple resists and 21, 25% increased move speed. These are very expensive uh, boots we're talking about here. Uh, this is not ideal. If you're looking at a pace pin that has these good boots, then this is not ideal. You'll also notice that his, his resists aren't maxed either. He's, he has the potential to have 80 to all this resist but he hasn't maxed all the resist and i've been guilty of doing this myself uh, i've always like figured that the resists will sort themselves out when i play i'll find a way to make them work but it's a like, if he doesn't have the resists work down here then it's not ideal he's using a lot of unique items which uh, well there's not much uh, room for I don't know. I don't know what to say. There's not much room for for making them uh, um, unreasonable, or so. You can't. You can't. Uh, you can only boost the damage so much on them. He has a belt that is very good. This is we're talking like this is several exalts. This belt. He has a jewel that is very good. He's using, well, the, the flask. There's nothing wrong with the flasks. He has a Watcher's Eye that has double hatred. This is a lot of exalts. We're talking, this one alone is like, I, it depends on the league, but say in 3.7, in Legion, where this one is made, this one would cost you like 50 exalts. So this is an ex insane uh, jewel. Fight for survival is obviously nothing wrong with that. Then let's head on to his like he has doesn't have anything in his notes. Let's head, let's head over to his co uh, configuration page. So we'll see that he has a lot of boxes ticked here, and it's a good idea when you're opening a new build like this to find out where is he getting where are you getting all of these things from. So let's start with power charges. So we'll search in the passive tree to begin with. So he has power charges from the Claws of the Magpie, but he can only steal power charges with this one from targets that have power charges, which means that versus Shaper, he's never going to have them. So does he get it from items? No, he doesn't, because we already went through those. He has no source for power charges there. He does get them from Assassin's Mark, but he only gets them when he kills enemies, which means that versus Shaper and Uber Elder and Elder, most of the time, well, versus Elder, he will have them. But most of the time in those fights, he's not going to have power charges because versus Shaper, he's go only going to kill other enemies for very short selected per, uh, periods of the fight. So I don't think it's fair to have that one selected. I also use Assassin's Mark on my Frostblades Raider, but I have decided that I don't think it's fair to have this one checked. So I think this one shouldn't be checked. Does he have 45? Same thing. Let's go to skill tree. 45. And we see that he does have 45. He gets it from his ascendancy. So let's move on to the next part. Are you leeching? Well, the thing is, when you're using claws, most of the time you're leeching to full health really fast when you take damage. So most of the time you aren't leeching when you're using claws. But we also saw that he has offering of the serpent. Which, me, which gives him life leech effects are not removed at full life. So he will keep leeching whenever he takes damage. He will leech the extra damage or the extra leech that he gets from his hits will keep going when he reaches full life. He will not leech when he is at full life, but the leech that he, that he got from, uh, from when he was damaged uh, will keep on going. He also has Bloodseeker, which 
Well, this weapon is completely, if you're using Offering of the Serpents with this weapon, it's completely useless, but because you're leeching instantly, so you're never going to be having a leech over time extra effect. But he will still get leech from his other claw. So he does leech, and most of the time he might be leeching. If, if he's taken damage recently, then he's going to be leeching. Does he have flasks active? Yes, he does have flasks, flasks active. You don't actually have to check this one. If your flasks are activated here, then it will this one will automatically count. But let's leave it in. Have you killed recently? No, he probably hasn't killed recently if he's fighting Shaper. So let's untick that one. Taunted an enemy recently? Does he get taunt from somewhere? Let's check here. Taunt. Yeah, he does get taunt from his ascendancy. Uh, he has 100% chance to taunt on hit. So we'll leave that one. The enemy is taunted then as well. Is the enemy ignited? Well, we'll see that he has no ignite DPS here. He does no fire damage. He has on the taming 10% chance to freeze, shock, and ignite. But he still needs to do, in order for him to ignite, he still needs to uh, do some fire damage. He's not going to ignite with cold damage. So that one should not be selected. Is the enemy shield? Yes, the enemy is shield. In order to shield Shaper, you need to do about 60,000. I think it's 66,000 damage or something like that in one hit. And he does a lot more than that. So this one is fair to leave in. The enemy is shield. Here's a big one though. Is the enemy shocked? The way shock works is that you need to do above a certain threshold of damage in order to shock an enemy. We saw that he gets the actual shock from from the taming. But unless you do 10% damage or more than 10% damage in one hit versus a target, then you're not going to be shocking that enemy. And or well you're not going to get the full effect of the shock. And you need to do about 0.1%, I think it is, or it might be even less than that. Uh, in order for the shock to uh, be applied or get, gain any uh, effect from the shock. So he's not going to be get, getting extra damage from his shock unless he's doing more than 10% or unless he reaches a certain threshold. So versus Shaper, Shaper has about 20 million hit points. There is another one that needs to be unticked here and he needs to do well, he needs to do about 2 million in one hit in order to shock Shaper. So that is before this damage is, or before this one is ticked. And he also needs to select this one, so Shaper Guardian here. And he does about 500k in one hit. Which means that the enemy is shocked, but he only is, like, he's only going to be shocked for a very small amount. And he's not going to get much damage from this one. He'll get maybe 10% or something like that uh, from this one. Which is still 10%, but it's still not fair to have this one selected. So this one shouldn't be selected. And if you have, if you're opening a build where this one is selected, you should have a look at this damage. And unless it says 2 million here without it selected, then he's not going to be doing the full amount of shock. So this one shouldn't be selected. I don't think it's fair to have that one selected. It's important to have the shock selected if he has something that gains bonuses from shock uh, from hitting shocked enemies. That's another thing. But in this case, he doesn't get any bonuses from hitting those enemies. And well, he gets 20% increased damage with hits and ailments versus, uh, versus shock and ignited enemies. But he's not going to be doing that much from this one. Um, so the next one, so I'm, I'm going to leave that one unchecked. The next one is, is the enemy a boss? And he has that one selected at no. This means that the damage we have here is the damage he does versus normal enemies in maps. Which is kind of unfair to have this one selected. If you're fighting Shaper, you need to have it like this. Because Shaper has, like, he's harder to hit, he has... Uh, resistances to curses. He has more elemental resistances. You see there in the in the tooltip. He has extra chaos resistance, etc. So in the end, after we remove all of these effects in the configuration, he ends up at 2.8 million damage. And 2.8 million damage is still a 
like it's just a decent amount of damage and it totally works it's a build that totally works but there are a lot of things in it that inflates the dps more than it should i think you shouldn't have abysses for instance i think it shouldn't have like this belt is super expensive i don't think you should have that one i don't think you should have watcher's eye with that one removed he'll be at 2.4 million and again like that's totally like you that works uh, but he's very, very far from the 8 point something million that he was earlier. I think that's it for this video. I I don't mean to shame anyone, so I'm, go I'm, never, I'm not going to show the source for where I got this build. But I think it's really, really important for people to learn how to uh, properly go through a build when you're importing it. The... Next time I'm probably going to go through how to import your own character and how to fix the settings and measure your own DPS. But that's all I have. And so if you have questions or want to hang out or whatever, then feel free to join me on my Twitch channel. Uh, you can type questions on my YouTube channel here or you can leave them on the forums or you can join my Discord server. There are over 400 people on the Discord server right now, so there's a lot of them who can help out with stuff. But that's all I have for this episode. And so thank you for watching and goodbye.